Hello, hello there, and I am Mandy Rice. Welcome to our first set of notes in development, where we are going to talk about really two parts. There's going to be two parts to this video. The first one, and what we'll talk about now, is the genetic influence on behavior. So then in part two, you'll catch the video about environmental influences on behavior. So let's go ahead and get started. So you'll see at the top of your notes, um, if you don't know what notes I'm talking about, go ahead and scroll down and follow the link to my store where you can purchase these notes for a really good price. Um, but up at the top, I give you this Venn diagram over what is kind of termed the great debate in psychology, where psychologists and anybody who's really paying attention, anybody who's ever considered who they are and where they come from, has considered this debate nature versus nurture. So let's kind of briefly talk about what these are. First, what they have in common is that both impact behavior in a way that makes it difficult to know which one is responsible for any particular behavior, right? So a more obvious one is I have brown eyes, let's say, because my mom gave me the dominant gene for brown eyes, okay? So that one's kind of obvious, but what about your anal retentiveness, a personality trait, or your type A or type B personality trait, right? Like, where do those come from? What about your religious beliefs and your work ethic? Where do those things come from? So the difference between nature and nurture is that nature is strictly your DNA. I don't even like to say that nature is what you're born with or um, comes from the womb, because even in the womb, nature or I'm sorry, nurture has an impact there. So nurture is things like schooling and of course your family and the way that you're raised, who you're raised by and how you're raised, but it's so much more than that, right? So um, and we're going to talk about that, the nurture side of it, the environmental side of the debate um, in, the, in part two of these notes. So a uh, perspective or approach, a school of psychology that we really need to consider is evolutionary. So this applies the theory of evolution to behavior. Okay, so with the twist of psychology is that we're not looking at mutations on um, the traits on how a species looks, but in how they behave. Um, so they say that our behavioral similarities arise from our biological similarities and believe that all human motivation derives from the desire to spread our gene pool. And all behavior is explained by that. So it's important to discuss gender differences and kind of what this looks like in the genders as far as how people are motivated that men are attracted to young women, and we'll talk about why, whereas women are attracted to older, more mature men. Because the reason being is that these biological differences that exist in reproduction, um, because of those differences, this is what each gender needs in order to best spread their gene pool. And remember, evolutionary psychs believe that every behavior anybody has comes from the desire to spread their gene pool. So men are gonna look for more young, fertile women because that's all they need, right? Like it doesn't take much for a man to reproduce and reproduce far and wide right? Whereas women, it takes much more. And that's just, bi that's just biology, right? Um, so they're going to want to find a mate that's more, that's older because they're then more mature and they are more likely to have what's called the stay factor, right? Her offspring are more likely to be successful if she has someone there helping her. So overall, evolutionary psychologists say that nature selects behavioral tendencies that increase the likelihood of sending one's genes into the future. Another perspective or kind of approach to consider is behavior genetics. This is the study of the relative power and limits of both genes, hence genetics in the name, and environmental influences, hence behavior in the name, on behavior. So how those two come together. And to know the difference between those two influences, they use studies on identical twins, separated identical twins, and adopted children. And you've got section in your, uh, a section in your notes for each of these. So let's talk about twin studies. First, we have to know the difference between identical twins and fraternal twins. 
And this diagram here in the middle of the screen is what's going to help you the most. You should note that identical twins develop from a single fertilized egg and are genetic clones of each other. They are genetically identical. Um, they, it's called monozygotic or zygotic, I guess. Um, and that's one egg, one sperm that through the process of meiosis or mitosis, well, I don't teach science, I guess psychology is a science, but you know what I'm saying. I don't teach biology. <laughs> um, they split, right? And they share a placenta because they came from the same egg that split into two. Whereas for trial twins, they develop from two separate eggs. So the female releases two eggs and two separate sperm fertilize them, and they develop in two separate placentas. They are no more genetically similar than ordinary sim uh, siblings. They just happen to be in the same womb at the same time. And research has found that identical twins are much more similar than fraternal twins in many ways, like abilities, personalities, and interests. So this guy here um, at the University of Minnesota in what was his Minnesota Twins Project, um, did a ton of research. This is Thomas Bukert. It began in 1979 where he focused on identical twins reared apart, meaning raised apart. They were separated at birth for whatever reason. Research is still ongoing, um, but he did study over 100 pairs of identical twins that were separated at birth. And he reported that heredity, right, like what they have some in common because of genes, accounted for 64 to 74% of the differences seen in IQ between identical twins, right? So kind of showing that research and how similar they are. Um, this is kind of an interesting story to consider about a pair of separated twins, Jerry Levy and Mark Newman. So when they finally met after all grown up, right, um, they had the same mustache, sideburns, and wore the same glasses. On um, 100 degree in forestry, one took a job trimming trees, one installed sprinkler systems, one installed fire alarms. Both were volunteer firefighters and liked to hunt fish, watch John Wayne movies, and love Chinese food. And then both drank only Budweiser beer, holding the can in an identical manner. So kind of showing you that genetics, because that's what identical twins have in common. You should definitely write that down and that you separate twins so that you can see that, wait, their genes are exactly the same. So any differences there would be due to the environment, not their genes. Just to kind of see, okay, how, how influential is the environment? Or how influential are genes? Because in that case, they were very influential. All right, another study is on children who are adopted. Adoptees' personality traits, so the children who are adopted, um, are more similar to their biological parents than their adoptive parents. However, their adoptive parents do influence children's attitudes, values, manners, faith, and politics. So adoptive children, they even tend to score higher on intelligence tests than their biological parents, as well as tend to be more self-giving and altruistic. So that's kind of interesting. But the biggest thing I want you to take away here is to think to yourself, okay, what do adoption studies show us as having an influence on our behavior? Adoption studies show us what is culturally or environmentally determined. And that those are things that you can choose, that you are taught. There's no way you're born with those. So things like attitudes, values, things you value, manners, faith, and politics. Those are influenced by adoptive parents or the environment. Okay, let's talk about heritability. Heritability is what I call with my students the big bad H word. And I call it that because students get a little freaked out about it. And at first, rightfully so. But I want you to get out, up out of your thoughts, right? Don't make it all complicated. I want you to think as simply as possible, okay? So first, what I want you to write down and like make a little cloud around it or highlight it, whatever you do, that heritability is simply difference due to genes. So with something like inheritance or um, how we inherit genes from someone, right? That's how we're similar. That's not what heritability is. Heritability wants to see or is looking for how people are different because of their genes. So their genes are different. So here's kind of the fancier definition. 
It's the extent to which differences in appearance of a trait, so what you can see in a trait, is due to the differences in genes. Therefore, it's not due to their environment. Okay, so the more inherited a trait is, the less heritable it is, as heritability looks at how traits are due to differences in one gene, whereas inheritance looks at how they are similar and that I get my whatever color eyes from mom or dad, right? That's inheritance. You have genes in common. That's not heritability. Here's an example. Identical twins have a low or near zero heritability. You should make a note about how the numbering there shows heritability because the variation in their behavior cannot be accounted for by genetic differences because they're carbon copies of each other genetically, right? They don't have different genes. Therefore, any differences between them is not due to genes. Therefore, their heritability is low. Now, the difference between, let's say, my personality and yours is highly heritable because we have different genes, right? And that any difference between you and I is due to genes. Therefore, that's high heritability. But here's the other thing. If you live near me, our differences are even more heritable because our environment is similar. And I want you to make a note of this. Meaning it's even more certain that our differences are due to genetic differences if our environment is the same. So you should make a note that as environments become more similar, heritability increases because you're controlling for the environment, knowing that genes have to cause any differences in a population of people. So I hope you find um, this set of notes helpful and make sure you catch part two um, for the environmental influences on behavior and have a great day.